all right guys we're live um today i decided to start a just for fun a challenge run i read on a forum it is a challenge run that involves no uh, upgrades to your exosuit or multi-tool so we cannot install uh, either upgrades that we get through quest or buy through uh, the anomaly we can then only use the first starting ship that we get and we can also upgrade its inventory capacity so we're gonna be very limited then the other um challenge uh, which uh, part of the challenge which i added myself is that uh, we're not gonna do economy crashing so that uh, we're not gonna counter the difficulty of the other two rules by giving ourselves like uh, complete wealth uh, so since also since we're not gonna be scrapping ships um because of the only the first uh, ship rule we will not be able to farm nanites as we've been farming nanites normally without any self-imposed rules but i think it's gonna be fun uh it is uh gonna be in permadeath uh, so that means that it has the difficulty of cha of survival, the damage uh, increase, the hazard damage increase. So hazard is going to be very, very um, uh, dangerous because we're going to only have the limited capacity of um, of, of protecting uh, of, of hazard protection, right? So we we won't have upgrades. It's it's uh, it, we we won't be able to last in storms. We have to be very careful which planets we pick uh, and decide to settle on. Uh, we'll only be able to have two cargo slots, I believe. Uh, that means those are the high capacity slots. Probably I'm just gonna have oxygen and ion batteries there because to to replenish both life support and hazard and have a hundred of them or however however many i think they increase the i think with origins update they increase the capacity of those two items to 200 if they're in the cargo so that's that's great and they're not expensive so we'll be farming uh, fossils or a um, buried technology salvage data for our uh, units we'll be generating nanites however we'll, we'll figure it out with what is the best nanite making method and if we even need it because i usually use nanites to for upgrades but if we're not going to be buying upgrades then maybe we don't need nanites um but i'm sure there's other things that we can use nanites for so maybe but the cool thing is that Every planet is going to be now very, very hostile towards to, to our character. Um, we're Sentinels is going to be very hostile. We're not going to have a shield. Animals, wild animals that take a chomp at us might just one shot us. Uh, if we upset an alien nest and, and an alien decides to like swarm uh, and, and come at us, then, then we're gonna have to dodge every single attack. Right? Otherwise, it's gonna be game over and have to start again. So I think that's gonna add a, a, a good element of, of uh, interest and excitement. So I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we'll also uh, be looking for very calm planets, planets that 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 would let us, you know. Um, be able to to gather a bit of resources because we're gonna have to gather our resources with with our multi tool. Um, I, I I didn't read anything in the in the thread about Exocraft, but uh, it's it's a far way, a, a few hours to the point where we actually own an Exocraft. If, uh, so probably we can decide by then what what we want to do there. But I think it's gonna be good. So let's see. We're just going to start. <clears throat> the beginning is the most likely point where you have to restart your game because you have no resources. You're in a planet with storms and, and hazardous weather without any shield, protection, multi-tool, scanner, a ship. You know, you may or not have a cave nearby that you can go in and, and shelter from the hazard. Or, 
for it, but if if not, if it's, there's no caves, some sometimes some planets don't even have caves, and you don't have a a, 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 a multi tool upgrade to dig. <coughs> Um, I don't know some some upgrades. I'm thinking now that the, um, I forget the name of that upgrade. Uh, upgrade. It's an upgrade. The um, upgrade that lets your multi tool dig through the terrain or create terrain. Terrain manipulator. The terrain manipulator upgrade. It, does that count as a no upgrade? Like it's part of, of a mission. You have to do it. it, it and it's one of the missions before you even get the hyperdrive. The hyperdrive is a it's an upgrade. So let's count those quest upgrades as you know you you need them <coughs> because otherwise there's no way to dig the salvage bur buried technology or fossils. We wouldn't be able to make uh, units. Yeah, at that point only the mining beam. Okay, so we are spawning in what looks like to be a hot planet. It's pretty flat, so there may not be caves. Oh, pretty cool mushroom there. Um, I see a hazardous vine there. Oh, yes, we have a cave. These stalagmites are representative of a cave, of, of a cave system. But they're kind of like at the side of the mountain. Testing, testing, we're good. Oh, yep, there's no cave here. First thing you want to look, oh wow, look, Azar, it's already down. <laughs> wow, and that's how much damage you get. And we don't need carbon, we need ferrite. First thing you need is ferrite for your scanner. You need 75 of them. It tells you it's damaged, but... Yeah, if, there's, if there was a cave... Maybe in that corner... All right, we're gonna uh, die and have to reload <laughs> because that's just the way it is. Oh, hazardous flora, and it killed us. <laughs> uh, yes, this is gonna make the game very difficult. Yeah, let him die. I'm thinking if if we would. In, in survival, you get to spawn and try again in the same environment, but in, in permadeath, you don't. You have to respawn in a new planet. Um, but uh, spawning in the corner, uh, like if, if, if there is, if, even if there's not a cave, if there's a mountain that has a corner angle, try to get in the corner and, and, and protect from the hazard. The, 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 oh, I loaded the other game. The important thing is to be able to um, stop the hazard so that you can actually even dig for ferrite dust because you saw how that, that hazard it went, went and, and even if you get sodium and refill it, um, it'll drain so fast that, that you don't have time to get more sodium. So you have to make the counter stop and then try to get ferrite because once you're in a cave your hazard suit naturally recharges and then you have a little bit of time to go outside get more resources and go back into the cave so kind of thing that's the kind of dynamic that we need to but wow that that planet was very hazardous too i don't know hazard suit went down really fast here we go new planet
Excuse me. I have a mute button over here. I gotta get used to using it. Yeah, but I'm 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 liking this because it's gonna be very challenging. And with the no upgrades the the game is just as challenging everywhere. Almost all planets gonna be unaccessible. And the goal is to get to the center of the galaxy. So we'll still have to come to planets to harvest resources or buy them in space stations. But it's, if it ends up being a game that I'm just from space, jumping from space station to space station, then I'm, it's not going to be good. I see a cave right there. So this is pretty much a good start. And I think there's another one here. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, we have a good start. I like that in permadeath, the counter, the timer for the game starts straight into the cave. Nice, and this cave has, has carbon. So let's stop that timer. Yep, are, are these carbon? I, I don't have a analysis visor. These are carbon. See, the hazard suit is recharging but very slowly and in this cave we even have a chance of hazardous flora spawning that can give us a uh, sodium let's get <coughs> yeah we're not gonna get cool just yet Let's try to get some ferret dust now that our hazard suit is recharged. Let's see, there he is. <coughs> we need an advanced uh, mining laser for that one. That other planet uh, was a bit more hazardous. Okay, so I think planets used to own, uh, consistently affect your hazard protection. What I mean is it, they would drain it at a consistent speed. Whether it, the planet was, you know, if it was extreme, it had its, 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 its constant speed. And if it was um, non-extreme or regular, uh, it, it, it would have a different speed. But those were the, the two speeds for draining your hazard suit. Now, I think planets have a variable uh, effect because neither of the two planets we just started on were extreme planets, but both of them were hot planets. And But the other one was just draining the suits and uh, th there was no storms. Uh, th there was not a storm in either of the planets. This one, not bad, not bad. Okay. More ferrite dust <coughs> because we have plenty of hazard protection. So I'm I'm glad because I was thinking for a, a minute uh, that all of the planets would drain the hazard that quickly, and no, we. Uh, so so I was thinking, wow, I'm gonna be in space just all the time flying around to avoid the hazard of the of any other of the planets that's not lush 
so this is doable you know we can still visit all the planets stay in the planet for a while I would be recharging hazard suit with battery no problem no problem we just have to be mindful of storms be be ready to either jump on a ship or like not be far away from any shelter all right let's update our scanner we're gonna need oxygen very soon to yeah we will we'll only have for the playthrough these two cargo slots for now I'm gonna keep them with the, the things we're gonna farm the most eventually we'll have batteries and oh here So we have to be make sure that before we head out to the Mark system, Mark, Mark signal, which is our starship, we're ready for, for and when we're not, we only have 12 sodium or more sodium plants. Pretty much we're we have we're facing a track of like 300 uh, units more, but without a jetpack. And you don't want to be using your jetpack or sprinting because it's going to drain your life support making you make making you consume your oxygen at this point i shouldn't be sprinting but look at this the, these uh, hazardous floors just keep spawning here so we're going to stack up on as much sodium as we can See if we move around they come back look there's more ferrite dust inside the cave this is great can we already install the yeah now it's advisor Or is that an upgrade? That's, I don't know. Nah, you need your scanner. Are you gonna find deposits otherwise? Well, you could fly around. See them from space. All right, let's let's not use the scanner. Let's let's install as least technologies as we can. What this means is gonna limit us uh, to the only the primary element that each node has to offer. Oh, look at this! There's also a little bit of dihydrogen inside this cave. Let's see what else is inside this cave. I'm getting all the ferrite dust I can because I don't want to be collecting it out in the hazard in the, in the extreme environment, right?
plenty of carbon. So yeah, we're going to be limited to one resource per node. And we're also not going to be able to find uh, deposits in the ground. Uh, because that's you use your... Oh, almost overheated. You use your... We cannot dig. We cannot dig. Wow, that challenge is very limiting, but I get it. I get it. Um, let's see if the nitrogen plants, I mean, sodium plants came back. Oh, they're not there. At least we have this scanner. required for the missions and everything the, you need you need you need that scanner you don't need the other you don't need the multi-tool one I think maybe both are in the multi-tool whatever <laughs> okay um, yeah we have plenty of carbon we have sodium barely have any oxygen Start is kicking in. Oh, I forgot. We don't have. We don't have a, a scanner <laughs> that we can use to find oxygen. Okay, so we have to wait for our scanner to recharge, which is about to reach full charge, and then we can get one overall scan. There we go, and it tells us. And and now we gotta be quick. We gotta find it like this. <laughs> And there is no oxygen. So, even though my marker is there, I want to go towards the nitrogen. Whatever is closest on the way. Then here we found oxygen. Try to walk. Oh, nice. There's two of them. So that you're closer remember at this point don't sprint ah oh, we're not gonna be able to scan creatures oh well that's cool you have to figure out their their oh where is that nitrogen plant here I, I, you cannot stop you shouldn't stop also crystals as you're walking don't sprint just try to use your mining beam you got plenty of carbon at this point right you don't have to be collecting ferrite dust either you can just walk by the idea is avoid avoid having to use sodium in order to recharge your hazard suit if possible oh look at that guy it looks like Houndoom the Pokemon I don't know okay Yep, as our protection is falling, so you know, we only have that small amount of sodium. And we're gonna need more later, too. Uh, so... I'm not gonna be collecting anything. Wow. Oh, if that guy's aggressive, one chomp is all it take. At this point, we have no shield, no armor. Okay, let's see if there's a cave nearby. Yep, there's no cave. Okay, watch out for the hazardous flora. I'm gonna start sprinting. Yes, we made it to the ship. You can take a bit of damage because the has oh well the hazard was gonna start consuming the shield once it runs out it won't take a health point you see so the shield just like the hazard so will regenerate too um yeah let's go skip through this 
it's just telling us it's gonna give us a tutorial on how to play but let's try to do it as fast as possible we gotta repair our ship And we're gonna need hermetic seal, metal plating. We can already make that metal plating. Uh, we're gonna need ferrite dust and the hydrogen jelly. We can already make this, the hydrogen jelly. All right. As our suit is recharging, but it's fine. We have plenty of time for what I wanna do. I need another metal plating. Oh nice, at least you already know the refiner. Oh, you can use base parts. The challenge doesn't say anything about Yeah, we have to build base parts. All right. Never mind. Okay. Drop the ferrite in. Welcome, guys. Boss. So let's jump in a ship to get the hazard suit to recharge. Alright, we're gonna skip through these to save time. I'm not trying to do a speed run or anything. Uh, I, I just wanna get my feet wet into this this challenge. I just read it on online uh, on a thread and I thought it would be fun. So um, this is more like a testing, but I think it is gonna be very challenging and make the game very difficult. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, pretty much planets are hostile very hostile like we we just ran into that uh, let me see I don't have a scanner that wolf over there huge massive wolf that is patrolling our base look at that uh, a red horned boar giant boar and I thought it was aggressive and I said wow if that if that attacks me with one chomp I'm dead Okay, hazard suit is draining. Uh, we can start putting carbon here. It's, it take advantage of the time. Because if you recharge your multi-tool and your components using condensed carbon, it makes it more efficient. You you consume less resources in the long in for recharging. Uh, so we'll be able to re uh, repair our thrusters, but we still need a hermetic seal. So we'll need to find the blueprint for that. Let's do an inventory cap. Uh, I want to leave the Corvex cube in the starship. Kind of nanotubes too. I'm not going to be collecting ferrite dust on the way. But I will be collecting these and they can keep stacking there. What do we have here in our cargo? We need... Yeah, we need ferrite dust and we need carbon. So this is gonna tell us where the um, hermetic seal blueprint is. All right, there we got a planetary chart. Coded coordinates. Um, yep, exosuit. Let me try something. When you pick it up, you get back the carbon. Oh, I think I think they fixed it. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, if we recharge it with condensed carbon, it'll take 34. But now it converts it to carbon when we pick it up. And it gives us a hundred. So you see, we just multiplied carbon. We, we just created carbon out of thin air. The only thing is we have to wait for it to condense again. <laughs> Either way, uh, it's better to just harvest it, really. Because it's very minor, the, the what you get. Okay, our oxygen is low. Usually, 
around your crash ship there's going to be a um, pocket of uh, oxygen plants that you can harvest like six or, or, or seven of them all together so let's see if we find that if we there there they are the uh, only four of them you know we've started a lot of <laughs> no man's sky playthroughs when when you know what's what's part of the <laughs> the programming and whatnot okay there's the hydrogen crystal over there this is a tech module we're gonna keep that facium sometimes they glitch out you have to engage oh nice hyperdrive module but we're not gonna do anything with it but we can sell them we can sell them for nanites that's the way we're gonna make nanites Okay, we're gonna keep this rusted metal and when because we want to leave um, that refining into ferrite dust while we go and look for the hermetic seal so let's place this back down now let's recharge it using condensed carbon and then drop this and it'll take two minutes uh, it'll be done before we, we come back, right? But we'll get 150 ferrite dust out of that for for just leaving that. Okay, recharging suit. Let's see how much oxygen we'll be left with. Okay, 35 oxygen. I'm gonna leave the hyper, hyper drive and uh, pretty much anything that doesn't allow more resources to stack on it, I'll leave it in the starship so that I can carry more things um, or, or gather more things on the way. Okay, hazard suit, life support, recharge. It's nighttime, it's not hot, let's go. It is hot, <laughs> it's still hot. <laughs> okay, we're not gonna be sprinting because you saw we have very little oxygen one trick that you can do if you're doing runs like this right and you don't care um, when when the game notices that you left your ship just now and, and are headed towards the hermetic seal it is spawning a storm so you'll see I, I just predicted a storm it'll it'll happen on the way so if you stay near your ship once you see the storm just run back to your ship wait for it to pass and then go out and get the hermetic seal and you won't get another storm so that's one way but let's see we're kind of like halfway we want this condensed carbon you see a fire firestorm do we want to stay in the firestorm I think not right so let's run back because we can get oxygen there's oxygen plants all around I just haven't stopped to get one let's run back Oh wow, without the scanner you don't have a compass. Okay, you gotta do it by memory. Yeah, but I'm gonna sprint there. I shouldn't have left too far. I'm not going to charge my hazard. I know where my starship is. <gasps> oh, I lost my starship. Where's my starship? Is it that star? Yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to use hazard sodium just because I I didn't think, you know, I got turned around and I started heading the wrong way. And now I have consumed a lot of oxygen for sprinting. But I saved the playthrough. Because we were about to die if I kept running that way. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, man. It makes you think. Uh, it make, make good decisions, right? Think about the, 
uh, the decisions before you make them. Yeah, in the, the other playthrough, I'm just flying around with jetpack all around the planet, not caring if I fall. <laughs> so we have some carbon. While the storm passes, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the regular carbon to condense. Refuel it with a condensed carbon always, and then condense the regular one. Let's see what we can get. Nice. We'll harvest ferrite dust during in this storm, or carbon, whatever we're nearby, whatever is nearby here. And then when when we take shield damage, we'll just jump on the, on the ship. Oh, nice. Didn't didn't take that long. Recharge it with condensed carbon. Yep. It'll use way less resources. So you're saving both resources, uh, recharging and also condensing. Uh, by condensing it, I don't know. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, because you you save inventory space too. Okay. Oh, shield damage. Yep. You can take one shield damage or two shield damage. After that, it'll start uh, taking life points away. Alright. There we go. We need a bit more of hazard protection. All right, now we're gonna head towards the um, blueprint for the hermetic seal. And on our way, we're gonna keep an eye out for oxygen plants, hazard plants that we can harvest for, our, because that's we're pretty much out of oxygen. We only have what our life tank support has. Okay, hazard suit recharge. We can leave that cooking. We say cooking, but it's refining, refining, or condensing. Okay, yep. <clears throat> Stop sprinting. We ran a scan. It wasn't helpful. Well, yeah, we found a sodium plant. And uh, I, f I had forgotten to get these. As long as you're not sprinting, your life support is not going to be drained. Uh, it's more your hazard suit. So, and we're good on hazard suit because we have a that sodium plant. I, I always kind of think that if I'm going to get a, a sodium plant here, then that gives me 15 seconds to go and get something over there. Um, Oh, because this this sodium plant will will replenish more than that the time that it took to get that condensed carbon, right? Never mind. Uh, me trying to justify <laughs> going out of the way in this extreme weather. All right, so we're headed towards the decoded coordinates. Not sprinting. I don't see any hazard hazardous plants yet. Here's one. And if we see nitrogen, I mean sodium, we're also gonna head towards that, and we do. There's oxygen here. Oh, this is awesome. 
planets look great now. That's fine. Oh, look at over there. That's a that's a rich sodium vein. You'll see what it is. It's a bunch of plants of uh, sodium plants all all next to each other. Oh, and there's another one over there. And there's copper there. Yeah, you need you need we need to be harvesting, so we're, we'll need our our terrain manipulator to harvest copper. Shield damage is gonna happen now. I let ha I let it to uh, usually once. There you go. And now your shield will recharge your hazard suit before your hazard suit drains again. Yeah, we want this dehydrogen. And we have that sodium over there. I'll look at this structure here. I cannot put a marker. I'm gonna really consider installing that one, the the scanner. Because right now we don't have a scanner and we don't even have a, a, a compass. But that does add the challenge, I guess. So that's why I'm weighing it back and forth. <coughs> but I think we it's doable. So so we'll keep with the more difficult side uh, of that equation, right? Okay. Here we go. So yeah, keep an eye out for those glowing yellow areas at the start of the game. This is pro this is pretty much a long time of minutes of hazard protection in sodium here. We should get the other one too. We'll come back. It's on our way back. So what we'll do is, on our way back, we'll go uh, the other side of that ravine. No problem. We have plenty of sodium to recharge the thermal protection. Let's get the hydrogen crystals. The more you get of these, the better at first. Gave us nanites. Yeah, I don't want to stop. That's why I'm not harvesting fair. It takes too long to harvest the ferrite dust. So I don't want to stop in order to f wait for the node to finish harvesting. Nice 300 sodium. That's what I like to see. All right, let's keep going. We found the shelter. Looking around. There's an oxygen plant over there. So for this challenge run, the freighter is gonna be the pretty much the most powerful asset we'll, we're gonna have because it's gonna offer us our, our inventory, our storage. It's gonna hold the storage containers and be able to bring in into any star system. Accessing archive looks corrupted. Yep. This is this is where we get the first hint that 
it is ourselves leaving these clues behind for ourselves or something I don't know it's all confusing the whole lore let's learn a word Another storm is gonna hit. It's gonna uh, trigger. And I don't want to be in it and consume the entire sodium that we just collected. Oh no, nice. Another uh, patch of sodium. Wow, this. This one is more rich than... <coughs> it's richer, it's richer. Can you say either? Can you say more rich or richer? Sometimes you can say only one, one... I don't know. Oxygen. Okay, let's keep an eye out for more oxygen. Rare metal, but we cannot harvest that. Yeah, Starship launch fuel is going to be very expensive at the beginning of the game. And we have all this dehydrogen, we'll be good. I see an oxygen plant here. That's fine. Where is that patch of sodium? Ah, I see it behind that boulder. As long as we're getting resources along the way, we can take the time to to, to gather them, you know? They always add time. So when when life forms die in in the game, they leave behind these these pedestals, and they they impart the knowledge that they have onto whomever comes by their pedestal. So it's weird. I don't know if someone drops it or the life form just suddenly turns into a pedestal. A knowledge stone, they're called. Okay, here's that patch of sodium. 
So these these are 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 pretty much funding the time for collecting all the other the hydrogen and oxygen and whatever resources you know we're we're stopping to get collect. And I think I saw another sodium patch over here. That's fine. And you see at this point we have 740 and we so we have we're gathering more than it than we're consuming is what I'm trying to point out. And that affords us to stop here up and get all these crates which is a lot of ferrite dust that we didn't have to collect nice plus there you go yeah. did you give me anything that kind of glitched out a bit Nice, we got sodium nitrate. Okay, more ferrite dust. I'm more interested in the rusted metal than whatever is inside the crate. <laughs> All right. I gotta get. I don't want to get turned around. So this is the structure that I, I've been. I've been using that structure as a landmark. Our ship is this way. Yeah, without a scanner, you don't have a compass. You don't know where your ship is. Eventually, we'll be able to summon it. So that's no problem. <gasps> There's a pit hole there. Oh yeah, there's the star. Ah, we can use the portable refiner as a beacon. <laughs> Great stuff. Awesome. That was accidental. So just like condensed carbon, you want to refine with the uh, higher tier items. They're more efficient. So let's re let's use that. There's our portable refiner. Some nanites. Keep an eye out for pearls. Oh, awesome. Berry technology module. Looks like this planet doesn't have album and pearls. I haven't seen them. Those are really. Um, Lucrative. Very lucrative.
let's leave that going and let's see what the quest says now okay we need to use the hermetic seal and now we can take off okay no we need to install the visor Just for the mission, let's see. Nah, it's needed. We, we we wouldn't be able to find fossils or anything like that without it. It's required. I've been debating whether to install the analysis visor or not for the challenge run, but I think it it would detract from the experience too much. Uh, it wouldn't. The the whole point of the adding a challenge is to enhance the experience. So, but yeah, without upgrades, we're not going to be able to make money using our scanner. It's just for a waypoint and, and moving around using a compass. Okay, uh, we can probably finish that later so that we can keep going. I'm going to pick up the refiner. Let's take off. Oh, it didn't tell us to take off. <laughs> it wanted us to use the multi tool awakening in front of me. Leave the planet. <coughs> Here we go. This is the s our starting system, first star system. Wow, the starship doesn't rotate as, as. But this is cool because pirate encounters are gonna be very scary because our ship is not gonna have an upgraded shield or weaponry. Uh, we're gonna have limited capacity. This is all the capacity we're gonna have. Technology slot. I guess we're gonna put an indium, indium X, uh, so that we can access blue stars. But maybe even that, no. Okay, so we tested all the pulse drive. Transmission incoming source. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna skip through these. We need uh, to f uh, complete the mission up until the point of getting the hyperdrive. At that point, we can drop, uh, stop completing the mission and go straight for the core. Uh, it, it, you know, get everything set up, find a freighter to then go and trek to, towards the center of the galaxy. So we want to complete this mission as fast as we can. Oh, there's salvageable scrap here, which we can use for uh, money. Although it's a toxic planet, We'd rather be farming in a lush planet where we don't have to consume our, our hazard protection, you know. Um, that way we don't consume resources while, while trying to generate them. Okay. I wanted to get, yeah, just a little bit of tritium to recharge this. Don't land on it. Well, that's that's how 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 you shorten the distance.
nice buried technology we can dig for buried technology salvageable scrap and there's one right here Yeah, I'm, I'm just using the research, uh, using the scanning tool to get a, a few resources, very technology modules to learn an exocraft or something to get around the hazard. We'll need a freighter though to ma to to make. Exocraft sufficient because that way we don't have to be building a, an exocraft station every planet we visit. We can just summon in our freighter. Okay, I see this hazardous flora. I'm gonna recharge the hazard suit but inside the starship so that I don't have to spend sodium on it oh there's a patch of sodium right there we're gonna go get that yeah let's let's take a look around see what we can what's the mission say establish a base Okay, hazard suit ch charge barely. Let's mark the nearest. Yeah, I know. I know. Life support is low. Four hundred and seventy. 600 copper for 407 it's next to a buried technology so let's go and, and get that one Let's wait here for the hazard suit to recharge and then we'll make our way towards the the, co uh, the copper although we don't have to stay in this system there's no reason why we have to stay in the system excuse me Alright, so let's see if we can find a lush planet that we can start harvesting the copper in. That way we don't have to, we're not, you know, harvesting copper in the toxic environment in Spermadeath. Um, so what I need to do is create Starship Launch Fuel. I'll need a metal plating. And then, wow, we're full. Okay, let's 
open this gold nugget. Yeah, I'm not gonna open those crystals either. <laughs> it's gonna fill the inventory even more. Alright, let's get out of this toxic nightmare planet. I'd rather take Frozen because sometimes no Frozen always consume extra, um, your your hazard. It's desert, desert planets that don't. Sometimes you're you're there. It's like a lush planet. You're not consuming your hazard suit protection. Yeah, Frozen Hell. That's exactly where we're gonna go. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Tory Planet is hot planet. Hopefully the last planet in this star system is a desert or a lush planet. Okay. Criminal rating, mostly harmless. We gotta go oh the other the second planet is right behind this one. So that's why we couldn't see it. But let's find this fugitive and gather this bounty because this bounty is very good at this early game. And it's the easiest type of pirate fugitive that we can find. We're almost we're catching up to him. Oh wow. Ran into an asteroid there. Pretend that didn't happen. Okay, we got a scan for the It's within rocket range. We engage first. Like Cobra Kai. Strike first, strike hard. <laughs> oh wow, one shot it. And that gave us milestones. Nice, good stuff. Okay, so let's find that second, that fourth planet, the one behind the frozen one. There. Crossing fingers that either way, if, if, if we have to deal with the hazard, we can deal with the hazard. But rather not. Wow, this spaceship is slow, but that's good because it makes the the star system feel bigger, you know. If, if and it's gonna be slow for the for the challenge run because we're not gonna be able to upgrade pulse engine or hyperdrive. It's gonna be short light jumps, warp jumps, warp, warp drive jumps. Ah. Nice, it's a lush planet. It does have aggressive sentinels though. Should we go? <laughs> it might have storms and aggressive sentinels. I think it has blue, blue grass. Yeah, it has blue grass. I'm not gonna go there. It looks like it has. It's an archipelago planet, so it's gonna be mountainous. It's gonna. It, it doesn't because being tropical doesn't mean it doesn't have storms. And the aggressive sentinels is what is worse than just the regular hazard damage of any other planet. So I'm gonna harvest my copper here in this frozen waste. <laughs> frozen hell. I'll take the frozen hell over the aggressive sentinels. And there is a copper node right here in front of us. this is it copper I don't know yeah it is okay let's use the smallest setting there we go just start mining and it, this is better than the one that was 400 yards away from our starship right we have our ship here if our hazard suit gets low we just jump on the ship and then get out and keep harvesting ideally we want to collect all this copper to avoid having to come back and do it again we're gonna need a lot of chromatic metal at the beginning of the game although if we find a trade station that sells chromatic metal we'll bookmark it and then we'll be able to come back and buy but we still won't have an economy scanner we won't know what a wealthy system is or not 
and only the wealthy systems have like thousands of, of a single element. All right, so let's just keep harvesting. Doing good, about to run out of fuel. No problem. We'll use, we'll use silicate powder first. I think they improved uh, the gathering of this. I don't know. It feels faster than than before. But yeah, this is gonna be plenty of copper. So we don't have to do this boring phase again. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Almost done. And done. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so now we have to process it into chromatic metal, and let's do that right here. And there's no rule that says you cannot have two refiners going at the same time. So we're going to have one going with chromatic metal, and then another one will need metal plating. Another one will be running the ferrite dust from... Well, no, this one is going to condense more copper, more carbon. Why don't you want to condense carbon? There you go. Okay. And we're going to start gathering carbon from this infested world. There's plenty of carbon everywhere. <laughs> okay, let's get in the starship, though. <coughs> Our hazard suit was about to expire. There are little dragonfly bugs. They're attracted to the fumes of the refiner over there. Yeah, so they're like, hmm. It's pretty cool. I can imagine in VR going around and just looking for yourself and pretty cool. Okay, carbon, that's not harvestable. carbon so that we can place here and keep refining we're out of it okay we need even more all right sentinel is not happy let's stop digging for a bit Sorry, thermal protection. Let's just move over to this side. Start harvesting over here. If it pings us again, we'll we'll stop again. Yeah, we don't want to wait too long because uh, Sentinel got annoyed. Okay, we're almost out of thermal protection. Here's the starship. Nice. 
<laughs> okay. Um, we can bring this dihydrogen to stack. See what we've got. All right, sorry, it's a lot of management right now, but it's just what it is. What's gonna be? Let's get more, more carbon. It wasn't a bad idea to come to, to this planet, this infested planet, there's carbon everywhere. There's also plenty of ferrite dust, I just haven't been collecting it either. Focus on the carbon to keep the refiners going. Harvesting because I'm damaging something, but all right. Now let's condense the sodium so we can re recharge our uh, hazard suit efficiently. Well, let's leave that going and just start doing the missions that we need to do. So we have to build a, like a demo base just to move the storyline ahead. There's no way we were going to reach that.
Alright, so let's just extract the plants. We already got a bit of salvage data from earlier. There's probably salvage data buried nearby as well. Shouldn't be an issue. Let's drop the research, construction research thing. Ah, uh, we need carbon nanotubes, but we also need magnetized ferrite. So we're waiting for a bit of magnetized ferrite, which we only need 20, so it should be ready. We'll keep, we'll let the uh, the rest also cook. Yeah, we're good. Let's go back in, in here. Research buildable technology here, and then biofuel reactor. Two nanotubes for metal plating. And for the biofuel reactor, we're probably going to need another metal plating. Yep. Okay, let's put the biofuel reactor in here so that it's protected from the elements. And then let's just route it directly. <coughs> okay, all we need to do is fuel this for just a few seconds. Oh no, I fueled it a little bit too early, but that's why you use very little. We really don't need a teleporter to be on all times. We have to name the base. Okay. This is pretty much a demo base. We're not going to settle in a hazardous planet. We're going to look for a um, you know, moderate temperature uh, and climate environment, maybe a desert planet or maybe a, a lush planet. I don't know. I like desert planets though. Now we can get rid of this. Let's see. What is it saying now? Fuel, now it says fuel. That's it. We're pretty low on condensed carbon.
No. Oh, oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sentinel is not happy. Alright, I'm stopped. I've stopped. I put my hands up. I'm just going to place them out of the way. I mean, move them out of the way. So now we have to go to the space station. Pulse engine just stopped at the front of a of an asteroid. Ah, we missed that fugitive. Epic. This is the most epic entry music. cannot buy ships nor would we have the money to we got to we got to do this Versus tile two. Armor. Here we go. Backpack is the last thing.
All right. That's better. <laughs> yeah, we don't look like we, we look the part. Invested, invested in the save file. All right. So we can the challenge. We cannot buy multi tools. We cannot buy upgrades. We can sell them. We found one, and we can sell them for nanites. Oh, you don't want to sell me anything? Okay, wave me away. Flag bearer. What do you got to say? I demand a place in your home. Bro. First interaction with an alien. And he demands an interaction, uh, a place in my home. Bro. Oh, this is the base over here. I shouldn't be uh, uh, talking to aliens here. Should go to the other hall. All right, let's see. Pugnium. Probably shouldn't have sold that gold. Okay, how much we have? Let's see how many batteries. Nice. Okay, so this is what we want to keep in our cargo. For the entire playthrough, we'll have only two cargo slots. <laughs> but that's good, it's gonna be a challenge. Real challenge. Um, let's keep talking to life forms. I think that's it. Those are the life points we had to talk to. When you leave, use the teleport terminus to return to your base. Okay, yeah, we're ready. We, we have to return to the base. I'm gonna buy magnetized ferrite. Also going to buy pyrite. This is for refueling our pulse engine. We don't have to use tritrium. It can probably hold five hundred. Yes, we could. That's fine for now on a magnetized ferrite. We also should keep an eye out for gold. Let's see if someone sells gold here because that way we can also create um, solar panels. Creating a save point. Let's do metal plating. Yeah, 
Yeah, we need carbon. What we can do for carbon... We can buy a bunch of oxygen. How much is it? all the oxygen? That's that's just too much oxygen. Let's get five hundred. Let's use a teleporter like it says. Nice. So yeah, we're gonna use the oxygen to create carbon while we also collect carbon and, and fill up our condensed carbon, you know, twice as fast. We're gonna need that for hyperdrive fuel and for a bunch of other things. I know, there's barely any carbon there. That's plenty. Let's have that one creating condensed carbon and this one creating regular carbon out of the oxygen we just bought. Let's talk to the base computer here. Begin decryption. Doing good. All right, let's go check out that distress signal.
right this is probably gonna give us the hyperdrive blueprint oh something I forgot to do is to move your technologies over same here to buy a microprocessor from the space station now. <coughs> We're almost done with the missions guys. After that it's just pure exploration towards the center. And First freighter we find, we're gonna hunt it for an S class. It doesn't even need to be S class, it needs to have the max inventory slots. So it could be an A class with the max inventory, I wouldn't mind. Although, freighter may be, I don't know, we're not gonna be able to install upgrades on our freighter either. So it's not going to have the best warp drive distance, but it's going to be better than this starship, I'm sure. Look at that, hyperdrive range 100. We're going to have to use uh, warp, hole, warp, warp holes. Yeah, you have to. There's just no... My microchips. Oh, these guys sell star silk. It's rare, and you use that for furniture components. Don't tell me to get chromatic metal, man. I got the chromatic metal already. There we go. Okay, hyperdrive. We just don't got fuel. All right, we've installed. Uh, we're gonna get a uh, location towards to antimatter. And that's also gonna teach us the blueprint. I'm waiting for my scanner to recharge so that we can scan for the antimatter. Without upgrades, the scanner takes a long time to recharge. And we shouldn't be out in space in case of a pirate attack. What kind of um, conflict rating do we have? Yeah, this is a, con uh, a dangerous star system. It's still recharging. <laughs> I'm just looking at the scanner bar go up slowly but surely. We, we just have to wait until, because we don't know where to go until we can scan. And there we go. We have scanned and it'll tell us where the antimatter trace is. Here we go. I see it. But nice for a good start because we already have 500 pyrite to charge our pulse engine, which just <laughs> we just ran out of juice, and now we can go. Uh, you see how how little it only took 40 to uh, fully recharge the pulse engine, so that's way better than farming tritrium and spending 100 tritrium on your pulse engine. I don't know if it takes 100 tritium, but it, it, it's not as efficient as pyrite, I'm sure. <clears throat> then we have a bunch of sodium to recharge our hazard suit, but we also have batteries to do that. So we can use the sodium for other things. 
that carb a little bit of carbon we're low on carbon hey you were supposed to hit oh you did okay antimatter trace Ooh, a trade station to me at this point these are free landing spots because you don't you don't consume the hydrogen starship launch fuel landing and and disembarking from from these space stations so we're gonna land here and check what this station has to offer we may buy some kind of element or or something from it let's see There's no point in talking and learning the language because that's just going to consume time uh, away from our goal, uh, which is to get to the center of the galaxy. Phosphorus, platinum, no, nothing, nothing we want. Sodium, oxygen, cobalt. We could buy starship launch fuel, but look, it's really expensive at this point. Okay, so let's get out of here. There's nothing we want. If they had uranium, for example... Uh, we could use uranium to to charge our starship. Um, what is it? The 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 launch, launch thrusters. Oh, we crash into something there. Alright, so looks like our, the trace, the signal led us here to an abandoned structure gotta be careful not to disturb those nests alien nests over there it's gonna cause a swarm to show up and wreak havoc on us looks like a corrupted tournament home we're gonna clean it up and it looks like someone left the um, blueprints uh, and a sample of antimatter so we're gonna take it. Maybe just the blueprint, they forgot to leave us a sample. But that's fine, because we have everything we need to craft it. We're missing ferrite dust for the housing. So right now we're carrying antimatter without a safe housing. That's very smart of us. Nah, but it, it won't hurt you. The sentinel will hurt you. Alright, let's see if that's enough. Yes. Oh my god, that's the only we need we need hyper cores because that's that fuel hyperdrive fuel engine is gonna be draining us our time re recharging it. I'm not gonna pay you anything. It's a pirate saying, Oh, if you bribe me, I won't attack your ship. It's like, No, man. You have resources that I want, man. Come on, bring it. Ah, they're strong. Okay. Alright, two down, two more to go. Just keep using your pulse engine to avoid their heat, their hits, and then turn around, shoot them, pulse engine again, before they start focusing in on you. Like that. That one's gone. This one takes a rocket to the face. And we got a bunch of resources there. don't have enough for metal plating all right good stuff so what do we have to do now warp drive warp to another system awesome good job 
anywhere. All right, let's let's move closer to the center of the galaxy. Out of jump rate. That's that's how far we can we can move. That's how far we can. <laughs> oh, no, wait. <laughs> no, we gotta use black holes. And uh, yeah, because without upgrades and without uh, upgrading our ship, there's just no way. Divide seven hundred and thousand by a hundred, which would be seven hundred. No, I think it's seven thousand warp drives. It would it would take seven thousand warp drives to get to the center with just one hundred light years in between. And sometimes the closest star is not even a hundred light years; it's less than that. Because the next one is past the the limit. But either way, okay. Uh, so this is where we're going. A Viking system, which is perfect because that's our our go-to guys uh, species. Because they're the only ones that stand up against the Atlas. Everyone else is a is Atlas worshipping um, entities. And it's not really the Atlas, it's the Sentinels. The Sentinels are, are like, gone crazy, man. Alright, crossing fingers, this star system has some place decent to settle. Nope, hot planet. Hyperdrive error, warp system, no fuel source. Alright, so we found, obtain a fuel source signal. Yes, let's go and find that fuel source. Okay. Uh, let's check out the second planet. Looks like a frost one. Yeah, it's a frost one. Looks like there's only two planets in this system. Yep. Although it's low conflict, so it's cool. We can check out that frost planet. Ideally, we want one that's a desert or a lush planet. See if we can buy some metal plating here. That way we don't have to go and mine ferrite dust when we land on the planet. Alright. Is there an alien here? Well, we don't need portal glyphs. Because that's that's another thing. It, you could get to the center if you just use the same glyph in the in the portal. Chlorine, silver, silver is good. This guy sells silver. All right, metal plating. We can stock up on more batteries. <gasps> no, we don't have so much money. Life support gel. Yeah, we're not gonna so much. Let's get metal plating. This is what we really need. Okay, uh huh. Metal plating. Starship launch fuel. We can sell the lim le lemium. Lemium, however you call it. That's good. That's on a, a lot of money. At least to us, uh, right now at this stage, it's a lot of money. Exosuit, cargo, let's drop the batteries in. We can we can get more life support gel now. Yeah, we want we want that full all the time. Here we go. With that, we can survive pretty much any storm just spamming the hazard protection. Alright. Okay, we're 
reaching the two hour mark I'm going to take a short break and then we'll be back for the continuation here I am going to we created a save file so I'm gonna exit the game to stop the timer let's, let's see how fast it'll take start point save let's see how much time we have okay so one hour and ten for for an hour and twenty minutes of of game time, I think we're we're pretty good. We're almost to the point where we're done with a mission. We have plenty of resources for creating hyperdrive. We have chromatic metal. We still have to find the the vendor for chromatic metal, but after that, we can make it a plenty of antimatter, and it's gonna be good. So let's see. Uh, I'll be right back.
All right, we're back, guys. Let's reload our save so that we can. We logged out so the timer wouldn't elapse while we were in a break. So we're gonna keep following the mission up until the point where we get to the space anomaly. Then we're gonna switch into the Atlas path because completing the Atlas path will let us install, uh, ah, we can install the upgrade to detect, detect, detect black holes. Wow. It's gonna take a long time. I'm gonna research, we can still keep going. I'm gonna research where, how do you get to see in your galaxy map where the black holes are? Because I don't mind having to warp three times to a black hole because my hyperdrive distance is, is trash. But if we cannot even see where the black hole is, then there's no point, there's no point in, in We could do one thing. I know black holes are a random occurrence now if you're just hyperdrive, uh, running hyperdrive through space. You could suddenly run into a black hole in any star system, whether it has a black hole or not. see what this stone has to offer us I see a patch of sodium over there but at this point we might be better off just buying sodium and we have energy cells so we don't have to be picking sodium anymore traveler so this is communicating with the anomaly it is last both nice and it also gave us a warp cell oh we can always ask polo yeah, we don't need to unlock it. It takes a little bit of more time, but you can always stop in the space anomaly, ask Polo for the nearest black hole, and it'll mark it on your galaxy map, and that's not an upgrade. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. We'll keep going. Okay. Unknown frequency. Images are unknown. You're not alone. You should remain silent if you, if you don't know who's who's contacting you. We shouldn't tell them who you are, but we're just getting through the mission. We know who it is. Coordinates discovered. Okay, where is the stranger's coordinate? in this star system I just don't see it on my map oh because I have to select the mission Trade frequency. Wow, that's a pretty cool starship. Let's take a look. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. Black and red fighter starship. Too bad we cannot buy it. Assigning cargo manifest. Uh, gold. Perfect. How much? Wow. Pretty expensive. No thank you. You want our chromatic metal, all we have is like 200 chromatic metal. You're willing to. Hundred chromatic metal is all we have. You could have one ferrite dust. He'll scan and he'll come and attack you for your ferrite dust. <laughs> Valuable cargo detected. You have one single unit of iron. <laughs> found Artemis's crash ship and it's an A class <laughs> it's an A class which would have been good to keep let's get the sodium where's our sodium we've converted it all nice there's absolutely no sodium to harvest nearby Ah, uh, we might get sodium if we start looting these crates. Let's just start wandering into the forest looking for sodium. Ah, we found sodium. So we extract the records of the crash. It tells us this ship belonged to Artemis. We discover a uh, upgrade that we won't get to install. Can we scrap ships? They don't say anything. They say no, don't use starships. Only use your own starship. But I don't, it doesn't say anything about scrapping them. I guess you have to use it in order to scrap it. I'll see, I'll see. We'll think about it. We'll claim it. But we'll leave it. This Nada, I tell him he thinks we're Artemis. 
we tell him we're not, then he offers us to enter the space anomaly. So we made it under an hour and a half of game time into the space anomaly. And we could have made it quicker, but I was gathering resources. I didn't want to just get to the space anomaly empty handed. Bunch of people here. Now, we pretty much get an option to either keep going with the Artemis storyline or totally abandon it, and that's pretty much what we're gonna do. So we turn it into. Priest Entity Nara. Uh, ask about the space station. I don't need to hear about everything else. I guess we have to listen about everything else. Let's ask about Polo while we're at it. Now we have to talk to Polo. All right, now I think we have to talk to people inside the space anomaly. Okay, now we have to talk to the technology researchers. No point in spending nanites to research things if we're not gonna use the upgrade. Just gonna talk to these guys multi-tool that we're not gonna buy we wish we, we will be able to spend on construction blueprints these are not upgrades so we'll still be able to build bases and and actually the challenge will encourage us to build bases because it's gonna offer us protection from the hazards while we harvest the things nearby it um, also since we're not gonna have that much money it encourages us to create drills and 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 um, industrial farms for our 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 resource needs you know that way we don't have to I ask for health exploration it tells me to talk to photo polo return to space and search for clues the Atlas path, reach the black hole. That's what we're talking about. <clears throat> the good thing is, going through black holes is not gonna be expensive because there's not gonna be any upgrades on our starship to <laughs> to break. Usually, you're, you're like when you're going through black holes, it's a it's, you have to go through th so many and usually you already have a fully upgraded starship when you're doing so it ends up breaking every single upgrade that you've installed already in your in your in your starship so there's not gonna be any of that problem anymore hey artemis we don't care thank you but at least we're gonna have him not ping us in our Yeah, we found your starship. We kept we, we kept your starship. Don't worry, it's safe. It's all broken and stuff, but we'll fix it. All right, then it's let's see if anything else pings us. Nice. 
we'll keep it here in the locate long distance transmitter. We can do that in any single planet and pick up the mission if you ever wanted to. But for now, we're gonna go back to our base and actually uh, dismantle it. We don't want to keep that base, that's just a demo base that we created. Uh, we're gonna get the resources back, but at the same time we're gonna learn a blueprint. And the first thing we're gonna do is find a uh, hazard free planet that we can settle in. We're also gonna be keeping an eye on space stations if we find one that has chromatic metal because that's gonna let us get tons of antimatter and we won't have to worry about um, our warp drive fuel. So let's let's check out this one out. I think I already checked this one out so I'm not even gonna bother. We're gonna go straight towards the base. Our first goal should be even even more than the um, than finding a planet should be getting a freighter because the freighter is gonna have the inventory capacity that we need in order to build the to build the base in the first place. Wow, I'm just realizing how challenging it's gonna be because. The, there's an upgrade. It's called the the materializer. That uh, like it's it's like a teleport of materials, and it it lets you access your freighter's inventory from wherever you are in that star system. So I just realized we're not gonna be able to install the upgrade. Therefore, we're gonna have to do trips up and uh, back and forth between our, our our freighter in order to collect resources. So it's gonna be imperative that we put a landing pad and, and not consume Starship launch fuel. So this is probably gonna give us upgrades. If it gives us upgrades, we're not gonna do anything with them, but it does give you uh, construction blueprints. You know, storage containers, there you go. Okay, we need more sodium. There's some here. Perfect, that's enough. All we want to do is place it down and pick it back up because that will cause the timer to start elapsing again. That's it. We just, whatever you learn, you just have to install it once and the timer will start elapsing. Okay, so let's pick up teleporter. These are resources that we're gonna use. Alright, good stuff. We can stack this. We can stack this. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's find a place to settle. So it's really whatever comes first. If we find a planet that's decent, or if we find a freighter that's um, yeah, we want those hypercores ASAP.
So let's start making our way towards whatever black hole. Anomaly detected. Alright, it found a, a black hole. That's where we're going. We are three light jumps away. I like this. I like that, you know, it makes space even fe feel even bigger now that, you know, we can, we, we, we just can't get even to the corner around our, our, our star. That's how, it, I, I don't know. I like that. and planning. Oh, this is the same star system we were in. <laughs> Alright, I know. You got it. Wait, what? There's a black hole in the star system we were in? The star is. I don't know what that star means. Hyperdrive has no fuel. All right, so we're here. We already checked this star system, so we're gonna refuel our hyperdrive. What we're missing is ferrite dust. Alright, let's get a bunch of ferrite dust just so that we can make antimatter housing. I'm probably gonna craft the antimatter housing here and be done with it. Just carry a bunch of antimatter housing. Gotta get a flat 500 here. Alright, let's sell. I know I have things to sell. That's all. Alright, let's see how much housings we can make. And it's good. That consumes all our ferrite dust. And if we find one of these vendors selling chromatic metal, oh, look how cute that ship is. <laughs> it looks like an ATA, like a Star Wars thing. All right, <clears throat> sell me chromatic metal, Viking. Ah, you don't have any. Why don't you have any? I don't even have units to buy. No matter. We already can make antimatter. <laughs> How many can we make? Seven. Let's 
condense five. That's one way of clearing your inventory, converting it into higher tier items and even refueling the entire hyperdrive. All right. So let's keep making our way towards the black hole. We won't be able to detect wealthy systems or their conflict levels. We won't know if they're inhabited or uninhabited. Uh, it's a lush planet, but it has aggressive sentinels. Nice. Oh, it's a lush planet, but it has ac <laughs> extreme weather. So, no win win. Let's see if we find chromatic metal here. Let's also sell this. <coughs> oh, we can get that navigation data. That would have been a good upgrade. Uh, it's a A-class hyperdrive that we found for free. All right, these are server rooms. Where's the trade terminal? Here it is. Uranium. Uranium and puffium magnetize. All, all three are good. Let's see if they have chromatic metal over here. kind of wealthy sit what kind of economy is this declining this is a failing economy but any chromatic metal we can buy is good forgot we have barely any jetpack more uranium No aliens. So we'll keep going. I think the next warp drive is our black hole. But before we check the black hole, let's not waste this warp drive. Let's check out the planets in the star system. Let's check out the space station. Then we can come back and, and go in, uh, go through the black hole. <coughs> Testing. Here's the black hole. We have uh, 
empty planet. Oh, that's a lush planet. Pretty temperate. Oh, look at this one with purple. Another lush planet, and this one has salvageable scrap. Ah, let's just go through the black hole. Because I don't know if I can find the black hole later. If I start exploring the planets, maybe I cannot find it again and then have to teleport five more times before I can find another black hole. <coughs> but yeah, we're already making our way towards the center. This is the, this is the best way, using black holes. Well, the best way is using a portal. But without the portal glitch, it's not a glitch, it's, it's a feature, but <laughs> that's what programmers say, but yeah. Then if you input the first glyph in a, in a single string, in a complete string, then you will, you will get to the center of whatever galaxy you are in. It looks like this is our first freighter encounter. So let's go towards the space station and save. If we can find the space station. Kill this. <clears throat> I'm trying to run away from them. That that looks like a lush planet. It may be fungal. Oh, it looks really cool. That freighter looks amazing. I've never seen a freighter like that. Come on, let me use my warp drive. Oh, I see that station. Okay, we're doing this so we can create an autosave and make sure we get a S-class freighter. The first one is gonna be the free one. And I'm glad this, this is a very different freighter. It may be that they updated it with a desolation the 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 way the freighters generate all right so let's create this safe auto save, restore restore point safe and let's go back out of space now we can kill the pirates <coughs> because now every time we reload Every time we reload, it's gonna be a different fighter.
Where's this freighter? There it is. Look at that. It looks amazing. I like it. a C class that's why you reload I mean that's why you save yeah man that's that's not gonna help anyone That's not what I wanted to do. Yes, we are gonna help her help. Oh, it's gonna be a Gorvax crew. Nice, that was it. Alright, let's check it out. Alright, it's a B class. Yeah, we have to make sure to get an S class. We we really don't care what the freighter looks like, but an S class is important, or at least the max inventory capacity, because in this challenge run, um, the freighter is gonna be our main storage, uh, especially for base building. Um, it it can support a thousand units of any element. So yeah, let's. Just keep hunting for an S-Class freighter. We only have to destroy a few pirates and, and, and check. <clears throat> but once we find that S-Class, it's gonna be very worth it, you know? It's gonna be the permanent freighter for the challenge run. Let me see where the freighter is. There it is. Ah, all right, we're done. We're gonna see that journey milestone message every time we reload. Hopefully, it doesn't take that many reloads to get a, a C class. Line. So yeah, we already went through a, our first black hole. 
we're done with the Artemis missions. We're, we're not going to run anymore. We've gone into the space anomaly. At this point, it's just um, asking Polo to mark black holes on the map and using uh, the freighter that we're hunting for to, to get to those black holes quickly, then going through them with our spaceship. Uh, because at this point, our spaceship can only travel for 100 light years each jump, meaning that it takes like five warp drives just to get to the nearest black hole. So the freighter is going to help us out a lot there. Um. But yeah, for this challenge, we don't need that many resources. It's pretty interesting. You pretty much only need a supply of con uh, condensed uh, carbon and chromatic metal for antimatter to make your antimatter housings. Uh, well, I don't know. We're probably going to be using our freighter to warp drive instead of our ship. So the fuel for that one is different. I don't know. I don't know what elements. But once we get a supply of uh, freighter hyperdrive fuel, we'll be able to, to start a, a sequence and get to the center really quickly. Hopefully within a few hours of game time or not that many. All right, where is the freighter? I thought it was that one with the wing. It is, it is, it has the wing. I like that wing on the front of the of the freighter. I never seen it before. This is the first freighter I seen it like it. So I like it because it's different, <laughs> you know? Yeah. A C class with only 15 slots. That's not going to help anything. Yeah, this is the most important thing. The freighter being an S class. I guess someone could even come up with an even more difficult challenge and say, no freighter. <laughs> oh man, but at that point, 100 light years each warp drive to get to the center. I don't know. It's 700,000 light years away from where we are right now. So you can do the math. Not to mention that since you don't have hyperdrive upgrades, uh, you need one warp cell per jump. So it's it's very expensive each each jump. And you don't have a freighter where you have refiners that you can make, you know, condensed carbon easily. No, no, it is challenging. Every single planet is hostile. Sentinels engage with you, they can one-shot you. It's already a, a difficult challenge. If they destroy our ship, we're done, you know? I can settle for an A-class. What we need is just the 49 slots or however many the slots are. I forgot it. This is a B-class. Only 17 slots. So that's not good at all. But yeah, the first one is free. And if you just walk past the encounter, like say, oh, I'm not even going to save this freighter. I'm going to keep my free freighter for the next one. Uh, you're going to find out that the next freighter you encounter is going to cost you a ton of units. Uh, because it already registered that your free freighter was in distress and you, you declined to help it. Um, so this is our free freighter. This is the first encounter we've ever we, we, we've had in this primitive. So we're taking the time now, not declining it, because 
it'll take a lot of hours to generate hundreds of thousands of units if we cannot economy crash. I don't know why I added, added that rule because there's not really a point for units if you don't have upgrades and starships and multi-tools to purchase. Um, well, yeah, for base building, buying out resources, buying out a ton of resources altogether. The challenge actually makes it more uh, attractive to become a pirate and attack other spaceships for their 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 resources because you you don't have to go out and get the units yourself. Which we accidentally shot our ally. Hopefully we don't lose the freighter. Oh wow! Yeah, they're attacking us now. <laughs> I, I attacked the, the I shot a rocket at one of our allies and, and they started they didn't like that alright let's see if we can still get this freighter or not oh yeah there it is If you shoot the freighter itself, you can lose the, the chance of buying it or collecting it. Wow, another C-Class. Oh, I know why. This is a medium star system. Ah, oh, man, we, got a, we didn't get lucky. There was no way to detect. We cannot install upgrades, so we cannot install an economy scanner. And detect what kind of star system we're warp driving in. So it's all a matter of uh, random, random chance, random luck. But that's pretty cool too, right? We don't know the economies that we're warp driving into. Um, we don't know their conflict ratings. We barely know where the portals are. We have to ask Bolo every time to mark them. But it's it's more challenging. Every aspect of the game just got way more challenging. And I don't know, I think it's fun. It'll keep it different, make it new. We just added a, a whole new difficulty above permadeath. Alright, let's go. I will settle for an A-class if it has decent enough amount of slots because just getting an S-class it's a 1% chance that an S-class shows up um, because it's not a wealthy economy in, in, even in a wealthy economy it's a 2% chance but still it's twice as likely to show up you know um, here is, is half the odds of actually seeing an NS class, but luckily we didn't land in a in a failing economy. Otherwise, there would be no chance of an S class, and the A class would be just as rare. All right, that's it for the pirates. Let's check the class. No, don't crash, don't crash. Yeah, if this ship goes through the freighter mesh and gets stuck inside, we're dead. Game playthrough over. Because there's no way. Well, what you could do is like pause the game really quick and and reload. Get out of the that safe uh, of that playthrough because if the character dies, it'll wipe your entire save file. You know, it's permadeath. And sometimes the glitch happens where you go through your freighter and you get stuck inside. Um, I don't know if they patched that. I think they did because it used to happen when you were pulse driving towards your freighter. Your pulse drive would not stop. Oh, I haven't checked the... It's a B class. My god, only 18 units, 18 slots. Um, yeah, you would you would pulse, pulse engine drive uh, in 
to the in, uh, inside of your freighter and then be glitched because then your freighter renders and you're inside the mesh and your cra your ship is just crashing into the insides and you're dead. Uh, so yeah, pause the game, reload, and you save your permadeath file. Okay. At least every time we reload, it's not counting to the over overall time that it takes to reach the center. Well, at least the, the play time, because um, it it reverts the counter to the last the save point time. Okay, here we go. Do we hit it? Two more. There's the freighter. Don't, no, don't get stuck. Come on, Magnet. C class. They're all C. We'll only be able to teleport into yellow star systems because <laughs> the indium is an upgrade interstellar and the indium hy uh, hyperdrive, right? But yeah, we have to route our path. This one had 17 slots, which is a lot for a C class, but no, 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 no. It can get all the way up to 31 slots. And that's twice, twice the inventory capacity. I don't know, I, 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 I like this also because since there's no point in upgrading then there's no point in doing an anti farm. If it, there's no point in, uh, you cannot uh, upgrade your inventory capacity. There's no point in hunting for dropout coordinates, which takes hours of game time. So what I'm saying is, there, there used to be all of these like checks that I would do on a playthrough. Oh, get a ship, max it out. Oh, get max out your multi tool. Get get a multi tool, max out the multi tool. Uh, get all the upgrades, max out your exosuit. Oh, max out all the exograph. And I would do all these things, making it days, days, and days of actual game time. 
before I even started exploring and everything and <laughs> right now it's all exploration without any upgrades it's it's like flipped all that is gone not even the quest line is is pointless because it, it gives you upgrades blueprints for upgrades but We can get those blueprints with salvageable scrap, the, the construction ones, and not have to spend the time doing the mission. We already can get access to black holes, so we don't have to do the Atlas path and learn the part of the uh, mountain. What, what's it called? I don't know. It's, it's an upgrade. It's an upgrade you install in, in your exosuit, and it shows you the location of all the black holes. But we cannot install upgrades, so there's no point in doing the Atlas path. What else? It's a permadeath run, so I'm not gonna be base building crazy things. Because if I die, I, I lose all of that. And I wanna get then therefore all that's left is to get to the center of the galaxy in the shortest amount of time possible. But we need a good freighter to do that. Yes! A class. Okay. Uh, let's check out the hyperdrive range. I might not care so much about the inventory slots, in my, uh, in all honesty, really. Um, this looks like it's also a small size freighter. But if it has good, good range, at least 300 light years. Give me at least 300 light years, please. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Let's inspect the freighter. Warp efficiency. Hyperdrive range, 159. That's, that's not good. That's not good, guys. Al although the warp efficiency maybe is a good thing. Fleet coordination. Yeah, guys, this is as good as it gets. All right. For a medium star system, for our first freighter, it's not bad. All right. Restore point safe. We have a freighter, guys. First thing you do when you get a freighter. <laughs> Destroy it. Look at that. Bunch of resources. We have a room, but I don't need such a big room. All right, let's drop things, start dropping things in our freighter. We don't need weapons. Wow, that's all we have as freighter capacity. That's that's lame. Still, it's a challenge on its own. We have to really pick what what resources we want to keep in our freighter. All right, let's try to see what we what it takes to charge this. Oh, it takes warp cells.
Ok, ok, ok. Good stuff. Alright, so we have a bit of condensed carbon. But we have a place now that is our permanent base where we can refine condensed carbon and keep making more uh, warp cells. Also, shortly, we should try and search using navigation data for manufacturing facilities and learn the warp hypercore. That's like, like a, a priority, a big priority soon. I don't need all these rooms. I like my own design. I like to do my own design. Although for a speed run, you wouldn't want to be customizing it. But this is not a speed run. This is just a challenge run. I just want to have fun. And I'm not saying speed runs aren't fun. It's just I, I just want to take my time and just chill. Okay, that's good. Plus, we're removing elements and we can... Okay, that's... Uh, stop yelling at me. That's a lot of silver, guys. Okay. All right, so we have a walkway around. That's fine. We can remove this though. Okay, here's our helm. Portable, we don't we don't know any any recipes yet we can drop our do we do we, we already created these did we yes we do so we can drop these here just for now we'll move them we'll create a refining room later uh, you want to keep them a little bit of set uh, a little bit separate Otherwise, they might glitch. Raider, Raider. Let's stack these. Okay, and um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna complete the freighter mission. Oh, let's drop the research thing also so that we, we clear that inventory space. We'll just put it here for now. Again, we're gonna once we learn the blueprints, we're going to create a nicer freighter. But right now, we don't know anything. <laughs> like every other day, I don't know anything. All right. So what we have to do is inspect our fleet, which it com our freighter comes with one. One spacecraft, a science vessel. Oh, it makes this challenge also makes the fleet missions even more rewarding because you don't have nanites and things to buy these uh, items otherwise you know you don't have a bunch of units to just stack plus you don't want to be running around dangerous planets putting yourself at risk so sending the fleet to get rare items it's it's a good thing uh, okay no so now what we need is a command room gotta go to the construction area and I'm gonna start building it permanently because I don't wanna waste time. So let me. So I like I like this because I can con I can come out of the uh, come in from the hangar and then go up into uh, other rooms. Uh, here I'm going to create a hallway like this. I gotta step away from it. There you go. Yeah. Then we're gonna create another one. And I think we can add a stair here. Yep. 
yeah we can go up again now we're gonna add another one and now here what we're going to do I just want to make it interesting it's not 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 the same old thing I do every time okay so we're going to use these these rooms and then let's just connect them first this way okay we're too far ahead that's a good that's a sign okay what I'm going to do I'm, I'm going to no what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Okay, I know. If you can't go forward, you go sideways. That's what you learn in, in dance. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't learn that anywhere. Okay, so here we're gonna drop a room. And I want to make it wide. That's I'm just trying to create a, an area, a space that's wide enough. I think this is this is good. It's good. So now we should be able to fit plenty of command rooms, fleet command rooms. And I like to place them in in order. One, two, three, and four. I think you can still send one more, one more freighter mission. But that's fine for now. Uh, what we're gonna do is going to s calibrate the command room. We're gonna download the frigate fuel data. Ah, this is the frigate, that, the fuel that's needed to send, uh, send starships on missions. All right, so we let's see how much resources we've used. We can still drop a few more rooms. I'm gonna do that so I can spend, uh, I can uh, open up space. Well, let's go ahead and send out our fleet first. All right, our mission, our fleet, our mission fleet. Now let's choose the exploration mission because our vessel is an exploration vessel, right? And it's gone. Nice. All right. So that's gonna be working for us now over here. Let's add this refiner room. So let's do a middle here. That's six spaces. Okay. That way I can start dropping eventually storage containers, and I can do already. I can already put one here so I can put storage container 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and then I have two more remaining that I use for the greenhouse so I put 9 and 10 well I it, there's no 10 there's no 10 um, there's only 0 through 9s so there's 10 in total we'll put 8 below in the bottom and then we'll put two more here in the second floor once we have oh I know why because you cannot you have to hmm. I think I'm not gonna use always I'm gonna directly create a room here okay boom yeah we're this second floor is gonna be our greenhouse the cool thing you know we're, we're reusing those resources to create the actual design we want how many do I have one two three okay let's start dropping hallways here gonna have one wing then we're gonna have another wing that way 
we can have the other two storage containers there and our harvester in the middle here um, and then we can add rooms this way for each of our plants so usually I give it I think it's three two hallways two hallways and then uh, square one or, or these the four four corner one because then I can drop a freighter room let's use this pattern just to switch it up okay I can make it and and then here I just expand it and make one room for plants and then across I have another room for plants and then I keep I drop another hallway go three more that way and then drop another one another set or, or two but if you do two there the rooms will merge together so I, I like to use three so that it they feel like separate rooms but w at this point we have run out of silver which is a good thing that's why I wanted to have the ability to get more and stack more here ah, I don't wanna okay let's we already drop a storage container and we can already access it here from our freighter so we don't have to go to it we can drop the frigate fuel okay let's I want to get I want to start making condensed carbon ASAP so let's go and find a planet and learn enough or, or find enough salvage scrap to learn a medium refiner yep ah, that's good stuff wait let's bring down the carbon and the uh, sodium we don't need the sodium we don't need the oxygen we may need ferrite dust for metal plating we already have metal plating we're good we're good Let's just keep the carbon to recharge our, our multi-tool. Let's get out of here. Oh, nice spaceship just flew out. It was a fighter. Barely got a glimpse of it, but looked pretty cool. We're not going to buy ships. We got to stay with this one and not upgrade it. I'm going to create a restore point, a save point. Just in case a game crashes or anything, we don't lose all the work we did on the freighter. And we're out! So let's go. Let's find a planet. I haven't checked the planets in this star system, so surprise. Contaminated gamma planet. We're not gonna go there. That is uh, nice. Oh, well, it has um, aggressive sentinels, so let's avoid that. Looks like a lush planet over there with yellow water. It's a vapor planet. Well, that what that means is that it is um, a swamp, a swamp planet, which is not bad. It works. Let's go there. It doesn't have extreme temperature. Uh, the only difference from a uh, lush planet, as you can see, doesn't have paraffinium. I mean, doesn't have star bulb. Uh, so, but it'll work. If it has salvage data, it's just what we need. We just gotta get a, a bunch of it. And if it's not a criminal rate, f f let's do it. Let's kill this uh, fugitive so that we can get those 200,000 those 200,000 units ah such a cool ship I hate to destroy it Wow, it's strong. And this is dangerous. This is not elite. There can be even stronger ships than this. Although he wasn't fighting back, so... But that gave us 200,000 units. 
But it still hasn't given us any units. Scorebacks wants to trade. Uh, I offer him 300 pyrite for the relic, and he gave me a timeless call that's worth millions of units. <laughs> Nah, 200,000 units, but definitely worth more than two, 300 pi, right? Nice. I like the name of this planet. I usually don't repeat the names in case they mean different things in different languages. They might trigger the the YouTube algorithm. Nice, it has blue skies or green skies. They look like green. It has really steep mountains. Hey, puppy girl. Don't crash into the mountain, Tony. Nice. Look at this. Although it's going to be hard to find salvage technology in this place. Just because of the terrain. There should be plenty. And absolutely none. This planet has no salvage technology. There's a bunch of knowledge stones there, but there's no point in learning the language. Let's get out of here. It's an awesome planet. Don't get me wrong, I love it. Probably doesn't even have storms. Look at this. Looks amazing. But we need salvage data right now. Let's keep scanning planets. Okay. Hey, shooters! Welcome back, man. How how's it going, Nitro? I'll I'll be uh, uh, if you want. Yeah, you can join. But I'll I'll be jumping around. Um, I'm playing. Uh, like this morning, I got up and I was reading a thread about a challenge run archetype for for No Man's Sky. And I thought it was it, it would be fun to just try it out. So this is kind of like checking it out. What happened here? Oh, you joined. You joined the session. Refuse. Let's fight some pirates. But yeah, the idea is uh, to get to the center. I'm kind of like rushing towards the center. We're trying to. Be careful, don't shoot me because I don't have any shields. <laughs> okay. And this is permadeath, man. go to Polo. We gotta go to Polo and ask him for directions. So yeah, the challenge is no upgrades, the starting ship and no portals, uh, no economy crashing and get to the center as fast as possible. So if, if we get to the center, yeah you could use glyph but that would be defeating the purpose of imposing challenge rules. Like you could use this, the first glyph uh, over and over and over in 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 the coordinates, and it'll it direct you to the to the center in one warp drive jump. But yeah, that's that's not where we. I'm just trying to test out how to make the whole world feel 
larger. Like the star systems feel bigger, the galaxy feel bigger, uh, the the planets feel even more hostile. And I'm doing that by not upgrading anything, um, which also saves a lot of time. And it's all about exploration because there's no point in uh, upgrading, right? Uh, what am I doing in the space anomaly again? Ah, finding coordinates for black hole. What? What? You want to give me technology when I'm broke? Ah, well, I don't care because I don't, I don't have, I cannot install it. Okay. Ah, uh, I need to buy it before he's going to tell me anything. I Come on. Alright, so we have to go to a space station in order to come back to this anomaly so that I can buy Polo's upgrade so that I can actually ask him for black hole coordinates. That's lame. If I don't want your upgrade, I missed it, you know. Done. I'm getting hungry though, so we're gonna probably stop. We've been streaming. Mr. Sipsis, they should upgrade pose when you shoot or mine. I yeah, yeah, that that would be pretty cool. They have kinda like the, the same stance since ever. And they're kinda like there, like just standing. It's 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 a good point. But yeah, this this is odd. I never seen him offer me any upgrades for a hundred thousand units. I don't know why he suddenly wants to sell me an upgrade. It's not like there's a lack of upgrade vendors. Ironically, he happens to want to sell me an upgrade in the one playthrough that I'm doing a challenge run. But here we are. We're in a space station. We get to say sell this timeless call. And all that money that we just made is gonna be spent. Let's see, do you have anything worth buying? No. Okay, we can just go out here. But yeah, I want to get to a center. I just want to get to a center. We're, we'll we'll get the achievement as well of getting to a ch uh, the to uh, getting to the center in a permit that uh, playthrough. So that's something to look out for. Well, that's if we get there, right? We first have to get there. And we could be a few warp drives away from it and then we die and we have to start again. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but it will be interesting and everything is just going to be more dangerous and challenging, threatening. Just the word. All right, Polo, sell me your upgrade, even though I don't want it. Dude, fix your starship, man. What's wrong with it? I think he, that person has been warp driving through black holes and it has broken his technology. Or he just likes the animation. <laughs> I think I don't have enough uh, jetpack to make it all the way up. Nitro says, uh, I have an S-Class starter ship. I upgraded it. Nice! Uh, I'm gonna get to the center on my creative save file while listening to this. Awesome, man. Go for it, dude. Uh, so, uh, that's pretty cool because uh, a lot of people trade their, their starter ship and there's, n there's no one like it. You know, you, everyone recognizes this, the starter ship Transmit milestone data. Alright, give me either one. Give me a weapon one. Unpin the formula because we're not going to install upgrades. 
But yeah. What are you talking about? Show me the, the directions to a black hole. No! Why won't you let me go to the black hole? Continue searching for Artemis. I don't want to search for Artemis. Let Artemis be. Okay, uh, it's... I'm sentimental. I still have the... Rassam for PS4. Dude, that's awesome. You cannot get that ship anymore. Uh, there's people like that, yeah. And there's people with the first ship. The, the first one that ever came. I, I don't know if that's the one you're talking about. But yeah, they, they never let it go. They always kept it. And right now it has a lot of credit because there, it's it's un, unattainable, right? You cannot get that kind of ship anymore. Um, so we're gonna have to just swing it, I guess. Maybe if we do a few warp drives, it'll let us. Um, it'll let us ask him for new coordinates. But yeah, we're going to try our capital ship for our warp drive needs because uh, there is a property called warp drive efficiency and it has a value of three. So maybe it makes our warp cells three three times more efficient. And that's a lot in, a, in this kind of challenge run. Uh, Nitro says, well, you can still get it if you find it. Oh, I see. Like there's still the ch odds of the, the procedural generation of creating the first starship ever created but it's very rare it's like you imagining the starship you want and having procedural what am i looking for star this this was just a habit of autopilot i i let the starships come in then i search for an s class if, if and, and then keep going <laughs> excuse me it was just habit okay so we're here now what we're going to do is use this freighter warp map. And that, yeah, that brings us a little farther. Not that much farther. But it will save resources uh, by re uh, avoiding having to refuel. Uh, was so long ago says killer caritas uh just follow that link if you want it oh yeah you can use portal coordinates and find it again you're right nice good stuff i have my my dog here she's kind of like begging for attention right now it's like god it's such a nice day out dad let's go out let's throw the ball around and run around <laughs> yeah she'll get to go outside and go to the park today yes you will but you gotta wait okay you're a good puppy so we teleported um i like this way of teleporting you don't encounter a distressed freighter every time although you have to go through the entire cabin into the hangar just to get out to space still it's less time than running away from a freighter battle all right let's try this again polo we'll check the planets here later we still need that salvage data i know i know poppy girl Do you guys know why P Polo might not want to give us coordinates anymore? Nitro says, if you're on PC, you can use a save editor and turn a random fighter into a Rasama with this code or seed. Nice. <laughs> so you, yeah, in PC you have mods too, right? Are there any good mods for, for, for No Man's Sky? 
can we get to the top? No, we cannot get there. We don't have enough jetpack capacity. All right, Polo, don't let me down. What? You want to sell me technology again? I don't want technology. You're supposed to tell me where the Atlas is. Alright, we're done. We're, no, no, no. Looks like he wants us to use... To do some missions or something. I don't know. Uh, if you're on PC, you can use the save editor. But there's back to foundation my favorite but it hasn't been updated for origins interesting yeah I, I've seen that on YouTube that, y that you can you can tell your no man's sky client to 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 pull from a different update so you can go back in time into foundation and play that update um, so you can play different uh, different different versions of no man's sky uh, if you're on PC. Alright, so Polo is reluctant to show us the way forward. Ooh. This, this might be a good planet. It's a parched planet, meaning a, a desert planet. And it looks like it has green skies. And it looks like it also has green sand. Oh no, it's the sky color affecting it. Just has sun, yellowish sun. It's not bad looking as planets go. And it looks like it may have clear weather. Because usually when, when weather is like stormy, you still see like a fog kind of thing this this weather looks very clear let's see what the weather says dangerously hot no I may not know that this is gonna have storms but it looks pretty cool does it have salvage data yep nope it doesn't have salvage data so we gotta get out of here we're not gonna settle in a planet that has no salvage data because that's exactly what we need and we need launch cluster fuel Fail. We're stranded, guys. We're stranded on a desert planet. Luckily, it's it only takes finding a little bit of dehydrogen. Oh, look! It has giant striders. What I could do, I could use a refiner. All right, they're not happy. We're getting out. Wow, they hit like a truck. That's only... Yeah, look at that. All right. So here we are. We have to wait for the Sentinel. Sentinel is no longer searching for us. So let's keep looking at the planets in the star system. Let's not waste a warp drive, you know? Let's see. What if we run by a lush planet that has no storms and we could just chill there and build even in permadeath? Our scanner takes so long to recharge. Okay, we're almost there. We're gonna finish scanning this star system. Um, oh, that's good. I'll take that. There are absolutely no storms on a <laughs> planet without any atmosphere. So that's what this is. This is a planet without atmosphere, but it has ancient bones, which is pretty cool because this is gonna be our main money-making 
method since we're not gonna do economy crashing and we're not gonna be scrapping ships either uh, or anything like that we're gonna use ancient bones and try to turn them in in the new giant monolithic structures into even better and then selling them for profit uh, so this is gonna be good since it also has low gravity it's gonna be easier to transverse uh, traverse the map without jetpack upgrades because our, our jetpack is gonna carry us over and the slow fall will help us in permadeath because we're not gonna die if we fall off all of, uh, fall off one of these mountains this is awesome this planet is awesome look at this these mountains for a uh, empty our exocraft is just gonna fly off into the distance wow look at those let's change the camera and this is daytime in daytime you can see the the the, the entire space and all the planets all right, this there looks like a ba a big area here, flat area. Let's try to settle here. We gotta figure out if it has salvage data. If it has salvage data, we're good. Then it'll have both ancient bones, salvage data. Looks like it has craters even in this flat area. So you see, pit pitfalls like that one. We gotta be careful. Oh wow, it's barren. It's barren. There's nothing. No salvage data, barely any ancient bones. Oh man, that's lame. We're out. So you get everything you like. You like the terrain, you like the atmosphere, you like the that has ancient bones and then suddenly, oh, no salvage data, no structures, no anything. Oh, look at that. It has a double ring. That planet. What kind of planet are you? Uh, it's a fungal planet with salvageable scrap. Something happened to the audio. Kind of sounds hollow. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's like the music stopped. Yeah, it's it's probably a glitch in the game. Kind of like the audio maybe bugging out. Can you guys hear me still? Yeah. yeah. Ah! I cannot hit this guy. I'm trying to look at the <laughs> stream at the and and shoot the guy at the same time it's not gonna work out all right we may need to warp drive again that was a good desert planet but it did not have any salvageable data and that's it there's only three planets here we're getting out uh do we have warp drive we have warp drive but barely let's use our freighter again Ugh. this is gonna get annoying having to go into the freighter just to save some warp drive resources. Eventually we'll have a condensed carbon to spare and chromatic metal to throw up in the air and we'll be able to make warp cells all day. Um, Nitro says, old generation, it makes the new NMS use look like old MNS. Oh, so it only affects the planets. Like you, you can load a previous save and have your planets look like the old uh, version of them um, but then keep all the other upgrades that like like the freighters and the desolation and the uh, origins and whatnot that's what you meant by porting why do I keep looking for the starships if I cannot purchase them it's just habit I've done this so many hundreds of times my it's woven into the pattern <laughs> like it, an exotic could land right then and there but we could not buy it. Okay, let's warp drive again. Yeah, it's galactic center. This one has plenty of planets. 
probably four or five. I didn't count them, but yeah, enough. Then we'll we'll scan this star system and then we'll call it we'll call it the stream uh, at least for for now. I gotta have lunch and I gotta take the dog outside. Why are you shaking, Mara? Why are you why are you shaking? What's wrong? It's okay. You're a good dog. Come here. You're a good puppy. She's good. She went outside today this morning. She went for a walk. I think she's hungry. You're hungry. Is that it? Yes, you're hungry. Okay, okay, we're gonna feed you. We're gonna feed you, yes we are. She's gonna wait. Okay, let's check out this planet and we're gonna feed you. Then you're go gonna go outside <laughs> and run around and play fetch. And then she's gonna beat, be, be beat for the night. Good and tired. And then that is going to downtown. <laughs> well, if if there's no protest and, and and crazy crap going on in the streets. Ooh, an endless morass. This is um endless morass means um swamp swamp planet. But it has extreme weather, so we're gonna avoid it in permadeath. Miasmic planet. Oh. Uh, Los Gamers Online says, hello, hello, Los Gamers, welcome. Uh, Los Gamers says, better not feed the dog. First run, then food. Uh, yeah, that that is a good, and also, it, uh, that's a good advice. They also say that for training as well. Uh, because then the dog feels like they earned their meal, you know, they had to work in order to earn their meal instead of just getting it for free. And it, have, it makes a difference. It makes a difference in the psychology of dogs and to the point that one causes the dog to become spoiled and the other one makes a dog that's more likely to obey and be obedient and be grateful. Like they, they become, they, they act grateful, you know. So it is a good tip. Um, but yeah, right now she's hungry, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna feed her. She's good. She knows all her commands, and she's always obedient. I do see her sometimes getting a bit spoiled. There's a planet behind this one, so I'm gonna scan it. I see her sometimes getting spoiled because um, when we go out for a walk, I use a long leash. Uh, she can she can like get a bit of distance away from me. But I do that because I want to be able to com control her only by command. Uh, for example, like not not depend on her having a leash in order to get her to follow me or or come when I when I you know by tugging the rope. But that I say you know like oh wow look at that starship. It's almost a shame to shoot it down. <laughs> All right. Bye bye, Starship. Okay, let's go to the space station and let's save there. But yeah, she she goes on a leash and then I obviously if there's people walking, then I bring her in and I control her with the leash. That's the that's the reason she has a leash. It's not uh, running around freely. But she is very well trained and she obeys and um, she's she's a good dog. She's a good dog. Yeah. Rare object detected. Do we have enough space in our inventory? Yes, we have. Emergency containment device. Nice bundle of dirty bugs. How much are the dirty bugs worth? Half a million units. Beautiful. That's plenty of chromatic metal for us to purchase. And condensed carbon. That's all we need to buy. We need. We just need to make warp cells. And eventually we'll learn the, actually very soon, very soon we'll learn the warp hypercore. So therefore, we multiply the efficiency of each antimatter that we craft by five. Because the hypercore will, will fully recharge our hyperdrive versus uh, requiring five warp cells in order to 
fully charged uh, hyperdrive. Let's see if we find chromatic metal finally. We need we need one station that sells chrom. Yes, we got it. Freighter, get it all. Okay, sell starship. Where is the bugs? Nice, and we got a profit, ten percent profit, which means we earn fifty thousand units. Right, that's a lot of chromatic metal then. Starship, get a thousand a thousand chromatic metal. And a trick I do is I go to five hundred and then I click twice. <laughs> then I, 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 I the scrolling thing is, is a nightmare. And that's it. We're gonna keep that extra, we're not gonna sell it or get rid of it. Now all we need is the medium refiner to place inside the freighter okay let me create a save file here we go so here is the upcoming what we need for the challenge is to use our freighter uh, to create condensed carbon then we are going to be able to come back let's rename this uh, chrome So I named the star system so I can see in my teleporter that these, uh, if I if I teleport to this space station, uh, I'll be able to buy chromatic metal in the thousands, at least 2,000 uh, chromatic metal each time, which is plenty, plenty for uh, antimatter. And then in the freighter, we do the condensed carbon and we learn hyper cores. And now it's just uh, uh, jumping from portal to portal. Uh, in order to get to the center and hopefully we get there on the 10 hours so I'm gonna quit the title screen I don't know if I saved the name rename I think I did uh, and uh, then so that the timer elapsed but let's see how much time we put into the challenge yeah we've played today for more than that we've played for four hours this stream is about to hit four hours um, but it's because we were reloading on our freighter for a long time. And, and, but therefore, in two and a half hours, we have a freighter. We have pretty much endless chromatic metal. We have um, just need a few more hours, uh, an hour or two more to get the, the salvage data, even less than that. Salvage data required for the refiners. And after that, it is a, sh a, a straight shot uh, towards the towards the center just getting war uh, finding the black holes I'll figure out in the off time I'll research and figure out why polo doesn't want to show us the next black hole location what do we have to do to get him to to show us the next one but yeah this is uh, tech Tony signing out hope you enjoyed the stream don't forget to like subscribe hit the notification bell and see you next time where we get to the center in this permadeath and gain the challenge and I'm gonna feed this puppy and then uh, go outside and play fetch. So, 